cleanliness is essential to civilized society for good health and comfort. A clean body, clean bath, clean home and clean environment are the norms today. The origin of personal cleanliness goes back to prehistoric times. Since water is essential for life, the earliest prehistoric people must have lived near the rivers. The Greeks were the first to bathe for aesthetic reasons. The Romans built public baths and encouraged cleanliness. Around 312 BC, Romans built many aqueducts that supplied water not only for drinking but also for washing and cleaning. When barbarians overthrew the Roman Empire, all the aqueducts, baths and public drains were destroyed. After the fall of Roman Empire and deteriorating bathing habits, during the Middle Ages, an era called a thousand years without bath, millions died in the cities, contributed heavily to the Great Plague leading to the death of thousands of people in the 14th century. It is interesting to learn the discovery of soap. The discovery of soap was accidental and soap got its name according to an ancient Roman legend from Mount Sapo where animals were sacrificed. When it rained, the animal fat mixed with wood ashes washed down into the clay along the edge of the river Tiber. Women found that applying this clay mixture to their laundry made their wash cleaner with much less effort. This led to the production of soap. Major breakthrough in soap technology and the earliest English patent to soap making was granted in 1622. The first industrial production of soap was done by two French chemists, Nicolas Leblanc and Michael Eugene. These chemists laid the foundation for industrial soap production. Leblanc in 1791 developed Leblanc process for caustic soda and used common salt to produce soda ash, an active ingredient that combines with fat to form soap and this resulted in a real impetus to soap production. But the real breakthrough in soap technology came in 1811 when Michael Eugene Chevriel discovered that soap contained several different fatty acids and glycerin established the scientific basis for both fat and soap chemistry. The process of converting fats into soap by treating them with an alkali is called saponification or soap making. The fat molecules used for soap making were actually triglycerides one molecule of glycerin chemically combined with three molecules of fatty acids. The animal fats include tallow, lard and fish oil. Even today, in Western countries, animal tallow, lard, that is pig's fat with coconut or palm kernel oil in the ratio of 90 is to 10, 80 is to 20 or 70 is to 30 are used to produce soap. In India, use of animal fat has been banned since 1983 and fat has been replaced by rice bran oil, neem oil, fish oil, karanja oil and many other minor oils. But unfortunately, all these oils had their own intrinsic problems. To overcome such problems, currently fat blends consisting of palm fatty acid distillate, palm kernel fatty acid distillate in the ratio of 80 is to 20, 80 is to 30, either in the crude form or distilled form are used. The blend should have tighter in the range of 40 to 42 degrees centigrade to make a firm toilet soap bar with optimum solubility and lather. Let us now go to Karnataka Soaps and Detergents Limited, located in Yashwantapur, Bangalore, diagonally opposite to the famous ISKCON temple to study the manufacture of soap.
to about 20 tons of preheated fat blend, about 50% caustic soda lye is popped. Concentrated caustic soda just before crystallization is called caustic soda lye. Addition of caustic soda is exothermic and temperature gradually rises to 120 degrees centigrade. No further heating is required. It takes at least four hours for saponification process to complete. To this, 2% salt solution is added and allowed to settle down for eight hours. After the settling process, Lye gets separated at the bottom and soap floats on this liquid layer. This soap is called curd soap. Curd soap contains about 60% total fatty matter. Soap obtained after settling for about 8 hours is called neat soap and contains about 70% total fatty matter. Neat soap containing high percentage of moisture being unsuitable for toilet bar production should be dried and therefore sent to drying plant. Molten soap coming from the huge tank is subjected to heat and vacuum treatment wherein about 18% moisture is removed and the soap is pumped through a duplex plodder to get soap noodles. Soap noodles are then sent for finishing, where for every 100 kgs of soap noodles, first color is added. To this, perfume, preservatives and special additives are added in the form of liquid and is thoroughly mixed. The colored and flavored noodles are subjected to milling operations using three-roll mill and pie-roll mill to get fine homogeneous ribbon of the soap.
This is further made homogeneous through duplex plotter pushed through a plotter worm maintained at 60 degrees centigrade to get soap bar rod. The bar is then cut into billets of proper size and then sent to the stamping machine. In the stamper, the soap takes a proper shape and name of the product is embossed. Waste arising out of the stamping unit is recycled through duplex plodder. The soap stamping dies are maintained at minus 10 degrees centigrade to minus 15 degrees centigrade to release the soap cake from the stamping die and also to give a shining surface to the soap. Soap now reaches the final packing stage which is automatic or semi-automatic or manual process. wrapped and cartoned soap, so produced are then kept in master carton and then sent to the good store for dispatching.